Lord, give us a wonderful class now. Let us be blessed and anointed. And I pray that your people tonight will receive richly from your loving hands. Lord, let this be a time of refreshing, restoration, and more than that, that you will plant some fresh seed in the hearts. It will produce a mighty harvest in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. Last Monday, I was teaching on what the anointing will do for you. And I'd like to quickly repeat those, in fact, just to make sure you have them on your notes. And then we'll go on from them. The anointing of God, which again is the fruit of God's presence. Once that anointing comes upon your life, it will bring, number one, revelation to your heart. God's word will be revealed to your heart. That's Exodus 25, verse 6. Supply to your need. 1 Kings 17, verse 14. And then through verse 16, in fact. Number three, cancellation of bondage and debt. 2 Kings 4, verse 1 through 7. Fourth, it will bring deliverance from enemy. Psalm 23, verse 5. Fifth, blessings to all you do. Psalm 133. Number six, it will empower your faith. Isaiah 21, 5 and 6. And seventh, healing to your life. That's Luke chapter 10, 33 and 34. Now, you do have all these in your notes, correct? Now, I would like to, to continue from there because what we are looking at here tonight is uh, extremely important and misunderstood by quite a few people. So I want to bring clarity tonight. But let's just go back just a few lessons and rehearse one more time what the anointing is and what the anointing is not. First of all, remember when I taught on God's presence, which is God's glory, which is God's person, which is God's attributes. The fruit of God's glory and God's presence and God's person and God's attributes, which are one and the same, the fruit is God's anointing or God's power. God's presence, glory, attribute and person changes you. God's power changes your actions. One affects your being, one effect, and one affects your acts, your actions. Now that's clear to this point, correct? Yeah. I think you can probably preach that part already. And I'm glad because repetition is important to spiritual truth. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. It's not by hearing that faith comes. It's by hearing and 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 hearing. That's why the scripture says it's by hearing, not by what we heard yesterday. Faith does not come by what you and I have heard in the past. It comes by what we hear today and continue to hear. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's say it together. Faith cometh by and and he mentions hearing twice, therefore it's three times and ten times and twenty times and a hundred times. So faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Why? Because you got to understand something. Our life is uh, not accustomed to hearing God's word 24 hours a day. How often do you hear God's word? Think about it. How often do you have time to saturate your life with God's word? Because the majority of your time, you're listening to other things. And much of what you listen to destroys the faith of God in you. So when a preacher repeats it, he's rebuilding what may have been lost. So you 
preachers and new pastors understand something about success in ministry. Repetition is success in ministry. Or a portion of your success comes by that. Because repetition of the word may, may not be always wrong. Sometimes it's necessary. And plus, psychologically, people uh, uh, really only hear 30% of what they really uh, uh, they are they're being told. So think about that you miss 70% of what you hear. Our minds are not capable of uh, retaining all that we hear all day long. Often we forget so quickly. Look how many times you forget things you hear or things you see. That's because we're, we're, we're not able to. So, but God's Word is so vital to our life, it needs to be repeated for our sake because we are not quick to receive. So when I talk about the presence of God, and I talk about that the presence of God is the source, and the power of God is the result of that source, that's vital, that's important, even though you've known it. I'm glad you know it. Now you can repeat it to somebody. And think about the clarity you bring to hearts when you help them understand the way the anointing operates. And what is the anointing? Now, that anointing that proceeds from God's presence, that affects my actions and my life, that multiplies if I feed my heart with the Word and if I fellowship with the Lord as I should, and multiplies as I associate with the right people who are anointed. And I gave you all that weeks ago. And now this anointing which also is transferred through my life to somebody else as well. That anointing can be lost. God's presence cannot be lost. God's power can be lost. And that's one thing we, most of us, do not understand. In fact, it's not even taught. Somebody asked me one of these, they said, uh, help us understand how you surrender on the platform. I said, let me tell you something. There's two things I can say about the anointing that comes on, on that platform. Number one, it's like old shortwave radios. You've got to tune it in, and a move of a muscle can bring it in or cause it to lose it. And once you're tuned in, God's part begins to flow. And worship is what allows you to tune it in. Number two, it's like holding an oily subject in your hand. It's easily, it'll easily slip out of your hand. That's the only. And it's a, it's a continual struggle to keep it uh, during, during ministry. Why is that? Because it's easily lost. In fact, once, once lost, and God's power is easily lost, it says, Samson wished not. He had lost the power of God and did not even know it. But once, once lost, it's, it's, it's hard to regain it. Now, it's not impossible. Now, in Samson's case, he lost God's presence too at that moment because of sin. But if you're living righteous lives, if you're living in, in fellowship with, the, with God and with the Lord Jesus, through the Spirit, through His Holy Spirit. That presence is an abiding presence. Say abiding. Now, abiding means it's not lost. He is with you forever. I am with you always, the Lord said. But His power is a different matter. His power is a different matter. And this is where we, we've got to understand that the power of God, which is the tangible anointing, which comes for a reason and a season. Remember that part. The presence is abiding, but the power is, reason, is for a season and a reason, right? You all remember that? Yeah. That's easily lost. And it's not lost because, uh, you know, we, 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 we're not um, walking with God. It's lost because we're distracted. It's lost because we are prayerless. 